Hi friends. You may have noticed by my sickly ghostly complexion that I have not put on my base yet this morning. Sorry, this afternoon. <laughs> We're starting late today. Had a late night last night throwing together some last minute voiceover self tapes at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes sometimes. But the reason we're starting off this video with a fresh face, adult acne and all, is because someone in the comments not too long ago requested from me a full base routine as well as eyeshadow, which I do do occasionally on the channel, not super often, just because to me personally, my base routine isn't all that special. I feel like if I did it all the time, it would just become very monotonous and repetitive. But once in a while, it is nice to update you all on my techniques and the products I'm using. The last full base routine was probably a year ago now. I will link it up here. And I'm sure some people do actually find it interesting. So uh, last weekend was really rough, but that being said, today's video is going to be really chill, relaxed. Not any one specific product I wanted to dedicate an entire video to, but I do have some new stuff that I just picked up. Also, if you hear some rustling in the background from time to time, it's just my mom, she's home, and I decided to come in and film anyway because I missed an entire week last week. So anyway, she's making some fries in the oven. Everyone say hi to Colleen. So I did pick up some new stuff from Danessa Myricks, which really piqued my interest. She just launched these yummy skin blurring balm blushes and they looked far too delectable to pass up. Plus I had some Sephora money burning a hole in my pocket. So I picked up two shades and I think I'm gonna try basing my entire look off of this color. I did a really neutral glam on Instagram just cause threw it up there, you know. If you're gonna put on makeup, you might as well take a photo of it and use it for content. But I really liked how that look turned out. It was a really easy one. I thought I could recreate it in a different color palette for you today. So today's just gonna be kind of a hodgepodge of old makeup, new makeup, makeup that I've had in my collection for a while, but has not been showcased on the channel. One of which being the Unearthly Cosmetics Leather and Lace Palette. And I think it is a gross oversight on my part not to, because look at this beauty. And I know these don't get enough screen time, so we're just gonna pull these out again. Cleano Cosmetics, if you know, you know. So I think that's all I need to tell you before we dive on in today. We're just gonna sit here, chill, relax, put on some makeup from primer to setting spray, possibly enjoy a hot beverage along the way, and just hang out. How does that sound? So if you wanna know all about the new Danessa Myricks blushes, how I create my base, then keep on watching. Let's just get started. First things first, let's de-ring ourselves. Come on, you can do it. Let's go. Ah, there we go. Also, what did you think of the last video? If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it up here. I had such a fun time with that one and it was super well received. So thank you so very much for all the kind words. And I know every creator says this, but I honestly think my audience is some of the most kind hearted, generous people. Y'all just really know how to gas a girl up. So thank you always. Feel free to dive in in the comments and have chats with us. Cause I'm always gonna be replying to comments. Even if it takes me a couple days, I always try to make sure that I respond to everyone. It also does help me out in the algorithm just being transparent, but I feel like we do have some really nice chats. Let's start things off right. And I know she's bougie, but this has been my go-to primer for well over a year now. I mean, if you've been in the makeup world for a minute, you will know that Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, I think is one of the most popular bases around. And as I get older, I just notice that I value hydration and moisture above pretty much anything else when it comes to primers. Don't forget the decolletage. I think in lieu of anything else, if you don't have a dedicated makeup primer, just use your favorite favorite moisturizer. Like I abandoned pore filling primers a long time ago. I'm gonna hit the hands with that too because uh, we got dragon scales for skin today. It's March already, at which I also cannot believe. It just seems unfathomable that we're already there. Three months into 2023, but it is dry and cold in Vancouver. Let me tell you. I think we're gonna do a nice full coverage glam base today. Sometimes I forego foundation and just use concealer, which totally works. But today I wanna feel the fantasy. This has been my go-to combination for concealer, foundation, and cream contour. I've been getting through the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation, and it's still at the top of my list, right there with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Foundation. And this has been my go-to concealer for a long time now because it is so cost-effective. This is by Flower Beauty. If you've never heard of them, where have you been? <laughs> this is Drew Barrymore's makeup line. It's excellent. This is their Light Illusion Concealer. And I do like the foundation as well, but not nearly as much as I love this concealer. This concealer feels like high-end luxury and you can find it at the drugstore. It gives me NARS 
Mars Radiant Creamy Concealer Vibes, which is a concealer that I love. Also all the shade names that I use, I will list in the description box below. As always, all my products are there. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna take these out for a second. So I use concealer first to hit the points in my face that need the most coverage. And for application for both concealer and foundation, I just use my foundation brush. Usually it's a nice dense flat top brush. My favorite is the Sigma Flat Kabuki. It's excellent for this kind of work. And so I just roughly blend that right in. I start at the bottom bottom because I want to leave time for the under eye concealer to dry just a teeny bit before going and blending it out. So I'm using some swirling motions, but I'm also using just some tapping motions as well. My nose in the center of my face, sometimes product sits a bit funny. So I typically like to just pat it out onto the nose just to avoid any slip sliding around. Now for my under eye part, I do like to go in with my fingers just because the heat of my skin warms up the product really nicely because the under eyes are a tricky spot, but using your fingers, gently patting, melts that product a lot easier. Ooh, she's looking a bit blown out now. <laughs> Let's turn that down a tiny bit. That's a little better. I'm just gonna go in with the foundation, put like a pump and a half on the back of my hand. And honestly, with foundations, you don't need a lot. I'm trying to avoid layering too much product on top of each other. So I usually just take this and dot it into the places where I didn't put my concealer. And just taking the same brush and starting to tap it in. This foundation just has a really, really nice natural finish, even though it is pretty high coverage, I would say. It just doesn't look too cakey or too matte. It's just a nice skin-like satin finish and it oxidizes to a nice place for me as well. There we go, blank canvas. Lovely skin-like texture, but the tone is just evened out. Now to avoid muddying up my foundation brush, I typically apply my cream contour with a different brush. Similar density, but just a little rounder. This one's by Real Techniques. You can find these at the drugstore and they are great. Right now I am trying to power through this Hank and Henry cream contour. It's in the shade Suella. It's one of the lighter shades. I really do like the consistency of this one. Not too heavy, but still provides good coverage. I try to avoid over over contouring my jawline because it always just looks like a chin strap. With circular motions, I'm just gonna start tapping that in. This doesn't need to be perfect right away because I will go in for a final blend with my foundation brush afterwards. When I'm contouring, I avoid letting the product drag too far down into the jawline here. Try to keep it more up and lifted. And then I always just kind of follow all the way down here. I've tried fighting my bone structure before. It just always ends up looking unnatural on me. These days, my motto has been go with the flow. I just like to do a small amount just under the chin in this sort of fat pocket right here, but I don't take it all the way around. And because I don't feel the need to heavily contour my nose anymore, I usually only ever contour just around the button. And just going in that one final time to blend out everything together using the foundation brush. Now, typically here is where I like to use a cream blush, but I'm still unsure how this formula works because it is a cream to powder blush. I'm wondering if I should be layering underneath my powders or using it on top. So let's do a little investigation. This is the color Roseanne Brunch, which ooh is right up my alley. Oh baby. So it is very creamy. I'm just gonna put it onto the skin and see what happens. The balm probably dries down to a powder. Oh, Wow, the blendability of that still has some shine. I'm thinking it's probably safe to do as a cream step and we might layer it on on top later on, but let's just see what happens. I don't know which one to use. I'm like so torn Ugh, and I couldn't resist. Here's Dancing Queen. Oh, she's so pretty. These really do have the most beautiful silky balm texture. Once you blend it out, it does have a very fuchsia undertone to it, but wow, do we dare? Do we go for it? You know what? Let's start with Rose and Brunch because I feel like if we want to build, we can build. I've gotten into the habit of applying my cream blushes with a brush just because I feel like it goes faster. Let's just take a brush and go in. Oh, wow. right up to underneath the outer corner of the eye, not too far into the center of the face, but not too far onto the temple either. That is stunning. 
wow, okay. And if the brush is soft enough, it'll give you that really nice diffused look without taking forever and a day to blend out. Just gonna pop some of that just onto the tip of the nose and then just a little hit on the chin. Forever a chin blush fan. It's layering beautifully on top of the foundation. It's not lifting product from underneath. I think we should just layer a titch of Dancing Queen on top. I can't help myself. If you've been here long enough, you know blush is, um, it's my kryptonite. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Do one final blend with the foundation brush just around, just to remove the buildup of product in those creasy areas before powdering. So I don't think my loose powder of choice has changed in like three years, but I've been using the Fenty Pro filter in the shade Butter for ages. I just find it gives me the best overall skin texture, but it also stands up to creasing really well. It doesn't get cakey. Rihanna hit it out of the park pretty much from day one with this. So why mess with a good thing? So using a small brush, I'm first pressing the powder in to the areas that I crease the most. So starting with the under eyes, the creases around my mouth, nose, and chin. And then I focus on the areas that produce the most oil. So around the entire nose, basically my T-zone. Wow, we are getting into the minutia today. And then I like to hit up just under the contour. And then taking a fluffier, bigger brush, we're just gonna swirl it in the powder and lightly dust the rest of the face and neck. And also if you have shaved sides like I do, I take this as an opportunity to really blend those edges going into the hairline. Just so it doesn't look like that the makeup just stops. Now she's looking a bit dusty now, but give it an hour. Once we've hit everything with setting spray at the very end, everything's going to calm down and look a little bit more skin-like. Let's move on to more powders. In the studio, typically this has been my move for bronzer for a long time. I don't even know if they make this anymore. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze in Tantastic. I remember learning about this product from Manny MUA back in the day. If you are the shade of porcelain that I am, it is a really nice undertone that isn't too cool or corpse-like, which I do find a lot of cool tone bronzers to be, but it's also not too warm that it looks unnatural. And I like to take a nice big fat fluffy brush, tapping it in and really just swirling over top of the areas that we contoured with cream. And you'll notice that this product is really hard to go overboard with. It doesn't have any sort of specific finish to it. It's not too matte and it's not too dusty, but also doesn't have an obnoxious shine to it. Sometimes I find that butter bronzer, even though it is one of my go-tos, can sometimes just be far too shiny to do any sort of sculpting with. And I know typically any makeup artist worth their salt will tell you not to contour with bronzer, but listen, even so I do like to be less specific with the bronzer, which is why I use a nice big brush and try and just get a softer shape to all of the bronzing slash contouring. But with a nice mid-tone shade like this, you can kind of get away with using it as a sculpting product as well as a product that adds warmth to the complexion. And again, Again, just taking it far enough to emphasize this here, right? So if you want to look like you've had buckle fat removal surgery, which is apparently the trend de rigueur today, take that contour down just a little bit farther into that hollow. On the forehead, I just tap this mostly into the hairline, not too far onto the forehead itself, because I think the cream contour does most of that work. But it is nice when you're going full glam to just reinforce everything and just dusting a tiny bit onto the button of the nose, just to emphasize the nose being up turned at the bottom there. And I really try to rein it in in this area. Just lightly swirl it just to soften right here where I can see my jowls starting to form. She's turning 34 this year, folks. Now for a final sculpting step. I love to take a powder foundation. I'm gonna take that smaller powder brush again, tap it into the product. I just like to do a final highlighting step in powder just underneath where I lay down the bronzer just to avoid pulling that bronzer contour too far down into the hollow. It just makes this pop just a little bit more, which in turn pushes up the cheekbone. It's like a bra for your face. Some people like to use a sponge and a powder to really sculpt and cut that line. I like to keep things a little softer than that while also still creating that shape. And it just makes that mandible pop, you know? Don't know why in makeup you want your mandible to pop, 
but hitting the center of the forehead just a little bit right in the center of the chin and then as a final brightening step i just like to take it under the eye and just on the side of the nose this is the part of the show that i don't show you i don't know how nikki tutorials does this she covers her entire mouth in foundation and concealer and it just looks so uncomfortable. Texture's not bad up close either. Today is a good base day. I did promise the full meal deal today. I, I realize that, which does mean that I have to do my eyebrows on camera. A promise is a promise, so let's zoom in and do the tedious task of building a brow from nothing. Now that our lips are a clean canvas again, I usually take this opportunity to apply some lip prep. Either it's a balm or an oil or both <laughs> because she's extra like that. This is the NYX Fat Oil, which is a new favorite of mine. This on top of my lip balm has been my go-to combo. It does have just the barest hint of color. This one's in the shade Supermodel. All right, brow time. As you can see, I shaved the tails of my brows because my natural brow is very downturned at the ends here, even when I was younger. So I typically just like to shave it off right here. And then I build a tail out from there that's just a little bit higher, a little more lifted. My brows have been through a lot of different evolutions. This is my most recent favorite way of doing it, but the products haven't really changed all that much. Typically, I take three different brow products. And right now they just so happen to be drugstore products. So first step is brow glue. And right now I've been using a clear one just because I don't need the extra tint for this step. We build the color after. And just to take excess powder off of my brow hairs, I'm gonna comb through them, take a very small amount of the brow glue and start combing through the hairs upward. I don't wanna to use too much product because it ends up becoming very cakey. Take a shot every time I say the word cakey in this video. So just enough to coat the hairs. I'm not trying to laminate them. I just want them to have a little bit more hold. Taking a clean spoolie and then just brushing through that again. Next step is to start mapping out a shape of the brow. For this, I love a really slim, fine brow pencil. Pencil. The one I've been using pretty consistently for the last year is by Maybelline and it's gone through a rebranding I believe since I bought this pencil, but it is the same formula So I'm gonna start from the middle start carving out the arch I don't like to take it too high anymore because I don't want it to look unnaturally arched I'm kind of just taking it where the brow hairs naturally end and then curving it around and doing just a little tail I don't like to do too long a tail or too short a tail just long enough to frame whatever eyeshadow look I do. Lately I've been favoring a thinner brow shape. I used to make these pretty chonky and I still like having fluffy hairs at the front of the brow but not to the point where they're looking like I've been recently electrocuted. And then we just fill that in on the tail. Trying to keep that tail to a nice fine point. Now, I typically used to fill out the front of the brow real thick. I know the early aughts are coming back in a big way, but we're not about to shave our brows ever again. It is not happening. We overplucked once and we shan't do it again. I try not to fill in all the way to the top of where my natural brows go. I used to get really wispy up in here, but then it ended up getting really heavy in the front. So nowadays I try to only draw and fill in about about three quarters up from where my natural brow hairs end. Because my hairs are so blonde anyway, it creates a natural ombre and it doesn't look too heavy. And then I comb through just a little bit on the front and I actually just comb the top flattened down a tiny bit. And I do think the thinner front of the brow just looks a titch more natural than what I was doing before. And I think it balances out my bone structure a lot more nicely. Again, really only filling in that bottom edge. So we're not giving in to the early aughts brow just yet. And you can skip this step, but because I'm anal retentive, I like to go in with a final defining step using an eyebrow marker. Something with a liquid formula and a felt tip, just to add the barest hint of extra hairline strokes. Plus it adds just a little bit of definition to the structure, especially at the tail end where we don't actually have any hairs. And you too can have an average looking brow if you spend way too much time using way too many products. I'm not gonna lie though, it's a pretty good brow day. And this is the part of the process where you would normally pop in. And so I think for today's eye look, I'm going to keep it 
fairly neutral. I was really feeling that monochromatic glam look that I did. And I think I can produce the same thing, but keep it within this color palette. And sort of rummaging around in my makeup mind palace, I definitely immediately thought of the Leather and Lace by Unearthly. I do believe they still actually carry this one. Today we're gonna focus mainly on this bottom row here, because if I'm right, I do think this color story will complement that blush really well. This eyeshadow look is not going to be outside of the box of what I've been doing. <laughs> Probably something involving <clears throat> a smoky wing. Surprise, surprise. I mean, comment down below if you desperately need to see a cut crease from me in the near future. But today's video is all about chill. Let's start the initial blend with the shade Venetian. Oh, let's actually throw some eyeshadow primer on. How about that, Maddie? Listen, multitasking is not my strong suit. Sometimes I wonder how I made it this far on YouTube. Now let's go into Venetian. So we're really just focusing this on the outer edge. As little structure as humanly possible. So blending it out into really virtually nothing. My goal for this kind of look is always not being able to tell where the blending ends and where the eyeshadow begins. Let's start building up even more using Mahogany. She's pretty pigmented. Oh yeah, no, this shade does not mess around. Focusing it mainly right on the outer third, just in this little pocket. Then taking the residual from the brush and flicking it out, just on the bottom edge, not taking it too far up here into the brow bone region. Dipping back into Venetian just for a little blend of that top edge. Let's go into Aubergine. Really just focusing it on the bottom and letting this gradient happen on the outer edge. Just really trying to avoid structure. And you can see I build the angle starting from the crease and finishing sort of at the center of the lid. All right, let's start building out that lower lash line. Starting from the deepest shade first, we're really gonna wiggle that into the lash line. You can bring the mid shade farther into the center, blending out underneath the deeper shade just ever so slightly. I knew using Unearthly Cosmetic shadows would be perfect for a look like this that I don't want to be too fussy about because these eyeshadows are really, quite frankly, idiot proof. And then a final blend with Venetian, the lightest shade, all the way around. I'm gonna take a little bit of applique and softly build a gradient into this transition area. Just taking this on my finger, oh, that's really pretty. And doing a quick pass where these two worlds will collide. Never actually even dipped into these shimmers. They've got a lot more going on than I initially realized on first inspection. I think this really sets us up for success with one of these Cleona Cosmetics shades. This is in the shade Foiling. Also, because I do detect a hint of a bronze shift in here. We could probably do a combo of these two. So that's the shade Flame Blown. Let's dip into my new favorite thing of the moment. It's the Glimmer Grass by Unearthly. This is an excellent glitter primer. Just tapping it off the back of my hand, laying it just on the inner portion, blending it out to the center mark. So let's just start with Flame Blown. It's the deepest of the shades, so we want to keep it closer to the center, blending into the outer edge. A lot darker than I was going for. So I think we are gonna use this as a base. All right, let's take foiling and go for it. This is definitely more what I was going for. It layers beautifully on top of Flame Blown. I'm gonna go back into the deepest matte shade, Aubergine. Really wiggle that into the lash line. All right, I think I'm gonna finally take a break off camera to go do this all on the other side. And then when we come back, we will zoom out and finish the rest of the look. Fry break.
These are pretty good for oven fries. I'm really digging this eyeshadow look. Kind of wish it was more berry in tone than purple. I'm not gonna complain. The eyeshadows work beautifully. If you hadn't guessed already, we're just using the lovely lashes from the Raw Beauty Christie and Pure collab. They really have become my Lily Lashes and Mykonos. They really have. I still have a fresh unopened pair just waiting in the wings. I am babying these lashes to death. Let's move on. I wanna throw some liner in the waterline. Definitely gonna maintain the purple vibes. This is a ColourPop creme gel liner, which is a perfect match. This is in the shade Trick or Treat. I really liked these creme gel liners from this collection because they have a really nice metallic finish to them. It just makes the waterline just a little more interesting. And to add just a hint of brightness, just in this tiny area here, going in with the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Strawberry Milk. All right, let's dive into some more blush. Now, I think what's gonna be interesting is how this works on top of powder. I'm very curious. So again, I'm gonna go in with that brush. It's actually not doing so bad. Oh, but that is very strong. Just a bit trickier to blend out when layering on top of a powder. It is definitely not lifting any product though. And it's almost as if the shine is almost all gone. I mean, it's very intense, but if you know me, that's not really an issue. So we've learned today that this blush can do it all. And the finish transforms depending on what type of product it's going on top of. The finish is still gorgeous, but it is definitely a lot more mattified now than it was before. Very cool, cool blush. The rest of the stuff we're gonna use today is stuff you've definitely seen before once or twice. I think we'll go into Divine Rose just to neutralize this blush a tiny bit. And you know she's my fave. I'm gonna dip into some Digital Dust Duo Blush from Melt. This is in Raw Honey. For a second, for half a second, I thought maybe, maybe we shouldn't use Golden Nectar, but then I came to my senses. Let's pop that highlighter right on top. So I was really feeling the high contrast lip. This is what I used for the center of the lips. This is the Vivid Lip Paint from Give Me Glow Cosmetics in the color Juicy Melon, and I love this product. It is so comfortable and so shiny and so creamy, but it does require a strong liner. And I forgot to bring the color fix that I used in that combo. It was a Danessa Myricks one, and I think it was in the shade Chocolate, which was great as a lip liner. It worked really beautifully and it was comfortable. But because I forgot it, we're just gonna try and make do with what I have here at the studio. So we're gonna go in with Myth, which is a rip lip liner from House Labs, the old House Labs <laughs> before the glow up. I can already tell this combo won't be nearly as high contrast, but it'll still give that 90s lip vibe, which is what I was essentially going for. I think I'll grab a little bit of this Superstay Ink Crayon by Maybelline, which is one of my favorite formulas to work with. And this is the shade Live on the Edge. Honestly, I hate the shade names of all of the ink crayons. They are so girl boss gatekeep, but the formula is great. So we excuse it. All right, for the final touch, let's go in with Juicy Melon. That is the move. I think all we have left to do is spray her down. Lord help me if I forget this step again. And before I can get any more glitter fallout on me, this is the look all complete. I mean, she is painted today. Like no one in their right mind is gonna do that many steps. Only insane people do makeup the way I do makeup. But I really like how this turned out. Those blushes are super duper fun to work with. And I so badly wanna take them back home with me. I am obsessed with this formula. It's super cool. The silky texture, the shine, but also the way it can layer over top of powder, no problem. It was really something else. It took all of my strength not to buy every single shade in this blush. If you are like me and you do set your face entirely, then that is the cream blush for you. It works divinely. Also, it was super fun pulling out the leather and lace palette today, which is one of the first things Unearthly ever gifted me. And I never actually ended up putting it on the channel because it just seems like such a utilitarian palette that I never thought to do 
an entire dedicated video just on this palette. These are the same quality I've come to expect from Unearthly. Plus these shimmers are so unassumingly gorgeous. I definitely thought these were gonna be just more a basic shimmer, but honestly, there is some dimension in there that I was not expecting and it is really stunning. So I'm super glad I picked this back up and used it again. And again, always so fun to pull out the Cleona Cosmetics shadows. In a perfect world, if money were no object, I would own every single one. At least the stained glass collection, I would love to get my hands on that collection. But even just to have a handful of them, they are so fun to play with. They're just otherworldly. And if you are in the market for some multi-chromes, you really ought to check them out. And they're a Canadian brand, so you can't go wrong. What's not to love? I've been really lucky out in the eyeshadow department lately, and I hope the trend continues. So I think that's it for today. I think we're good. We're done. So I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna bounce and finish these fries and enjoy the rest of my Friday night. So I'm going to love you and leave you. But before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement with this video is crucial to its success in the algorithm. So if you have a few spare seconds, please engage with this video. You can follow me on other social media, i.e. you can follow me on Instagram. It's the only one I'm ever active on and I will leave that right there. I really hope you enjoyed this more in-depth, laid-back video. And for those of you asking for my full face routine, I hope you are satisfied because we're probably not going to do it again for another six months <laughs> or until some new foundations come down the line that I'm actually intrigued by. Leave a comment down below on some of your favorite holy grail products. I would love to check anything new out that I've never seen before and I'm always down to hear new favorites. All right, with that folks, please stay safe, wash your hands, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!